What is a C clarinet? It's a clarinet. In C. Well, what does that mean? Clarinets come in a variety of sizes and pitches, from the teeny tiny A-flat piccolo clarinet to the enormous contrabass clarinet, pitched two full octaves below a standard B-flat clarinet. But wait, if the standard clarinet is B-flat, what is a C clarinet? Okay, this is a long story. The key thing to understand about all of these clarinets, and why they're named for the key they're pitched in, is that music written for these instruments always assigns any given fingering to the same note in the sheet music, regardless of what pitch that is actually producing. The fingering system is the same on all of the clarinets, with some extra keys for very low notes on the bass clarinet and below. So a person who knows how to play clarinet can instantly pick up any member of the family and know the fingerings for the notes on the page, even though learning different instruments in the family does require some nuance in finger placement and especially embouchure, the shape of your mouth around the mouthpiece. So wait though, why is the standard clarinet in B-flat and what exactly does that mean? Concert pitch instruments, or C instruments, produce the same note as the piano. So, on a C instrument, if you play what on that instrument is considered to be a C, it will also be a C on a piano. Instruments are named for the concert pitch they produce when they play that instrument's C. So, when you're playing a B-flat clarinet, if you finger a C, the note that comes out matches a B-flat on a piano. The reasons why the B-flat clarinet is the most common variety today are largely historical. The A clarinet is also popular, mainly in orchestras, because music for strings is mostly written in keys with a lot of sharps, and those keys are easier to play on an A clarinet. But for wind band and jazz, the B flat clarinet became the dominant variety. Up until the early 20th century, soprano clarinets came in a wide range of pitches, from E flat, still used fairly often today, to D, C, B flat, A, and G. But as the instrumentation of wind band stabilized, and clarinets also became a popular instrument in jazz, the D, C, and G clarinets largely fell out of favor. These days, it's extremely hard to find a C clarinet. I managed to locate a decades-old refurbished model on consignment in my area, but at $2,500, it was far too expensive for me to consider buying for my rather limited needs. $169, though? I could swing that. Why do I need a C clarinet? Each instrument in the woodwind family has a complicated history, and the versions of these instruments in a modern band or orchestra reflect that history. While some, like the clarinet, took a very convoluted path to their current iterations, others, like the flute and oboe, had stabilized much earlier, and today's versions of those instruments are in concert pitch. Which gets me to why I need this instrument. I'm a multi-instrumentalist, but I can't really play the flute. Oh, I know the fingerings, since they're not much different from a saxophone, but the technique for blowing into the mouthpiece eludes me. I took a semester of flute lessons my senior year of college, but I just never caught on. And, well, I've never even touched an oboe. Next month, I'm performing in the Pitt Orchestra for a community theater production of A Christmas Carol. Pitt Orchestra books for woodwind instruments, or reeds, are written with an assumption that the reed player can handle pretty much any instrument in the family. The book I'm assigned to asks me to play flute, clarinet, bass clarinet, and tenor sax. I have a ton of experience with three of those four instruments, but like I said, I can't play flute. In the past, my reed books have typically included a very small amount of flute, and I've just transposed those parts to play on clarinet. But in this case, the book is about one-third flute, it would take me several days of work to transpose all of those parts and typeset them in MuseScore. Or, to be more specific, to typeset them in MuseScore and then let it do the transpositions. So I decided it was worthwhile to just explore the possibility of getting myself a C clarinet. With that, I can just play the flute parts exactly as written in the book, on clarinet. Yes, it's the wrong timbre, but it will get the job done. In fact, the other reed players and I are swapping a number of parts, so most of my flute bits are being covered now by someone else, but I still have a few, and I've also been given a few oboe parts along the way. As I said earlier, I wasn't willing to spend over $2,000 on a C clarinet just for this, but I was absolutely prepared to spend $169 when I found a no-name Chinese-made C clarinet on Amazon. It may not be a great instrument, but it might just get the job done, and worst case, I'd just be back to transposing those parts. 
I ordered it. I watched the shipment tracking for days. And now, it's here. So, is it any good? Let's find out. Unboxing the Sea Clarinet Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. Chinese manufacturing. In 2023, there is really no way a high-quality, handmade musical instrument should be anywhere near this cheap. So, it's either a garbage toy, or it was produced under poor working conditions. I suspect that some advanced machinery was involved in its manufacture, but there's very little chance that there wasn't also some skilled manual labor, being paid far too little, working too many hours, and living in poor conditions. I can't deny that. I also can't deny the reality that this is the only way I could get my hands on a C clarinet at a price I could justify spending. I do struggle with this. I don't have a satisfactory answer. One thing I find odd about Chinese-made wind instruments is that they always come with a pair of white gloves. Why? Seriously, why? This instrument also came with two barrels. That's the little piece of tubing between the mouthpiece and the upper joint. They're slightly different lengths, allowing for variation in tuning. This is most likely because in the United States, we tune almost universally to A equals 440 hertz, whereas in Europe, some orchestras tune higher, up to A444. With the two barrels, I can choose the one that best fits my performance context. High-quality clarinets are typically made of a very dense hardwood, but cheaper instruments are made out of a synthetic material called ebonite. It's easier to work with and is more durable than wood, not subject to changes in humidity and temperature. It also doesn't sound as good, but it's not terrible. Take a guess what this is made out of. Honestly, I'm not quite sure. The actual Amazon listing says it's ebonite, and I can't imagine it being anything else, but it actually feels like wood. Maybe manufacturers have just gotten better at giving the outer surface a wood-like texture. The outside of the case seems to be real leather. At least, it smells like it. Or maybe just chemicals. Anyway, it's bigger than it needs to be, although it's clear upon opening it that the manufacturer uses the same cases for B-flat and A clarinets as well. The slots for the parts are oversized. The interior of the case feels extremely cheap, and annoyingly, it lacks any storage space for reeds or the swab, although I found later that it was easy enough to just set a reed case in there and close it. Other accessories in the case, none of which I will actually be using, because I already own better ones, are the swab, polishing cloth, screwdriver, and ugh, some cork grease? Or maybe it's lard? Whatever it is, someone definitely just dipped a spatula in a big tub of it and hastily scraped off some into this two-cent plastic container. This clarinet definitely needs cork grease, though. I have never had as much trouble putting together an instrument as this. I probably bent a few keys trying to force it together. The cork immediately compressed, though, so I suspect over time it's going to be much easier to assemble. But how does it sound? The good news is it sounds like a clarinet. Actually, it sounds really good. No one's going to mistake it for a $4,000 buffet, but it produces a nice, clear tone, the keys all seal properly, it responds easily across the full range, and it feels, well, it feels like a decent clarinet. It's probably better than the student instrument I started on in fifth grade. It's not as nice as my Yamaha, and it's definitely not as nice as my old buffet that my son has now, but it doesn't feel like something that costs less than a decent mouthpiece. Speaking of which, ugh, that mouthpiece. I didn't even bother trying it, or especially that hideous reed it came with. I probably should have for completeness, but I just don't want to put that thing in my mouth. So instead, I'm playing on what I'll actually be using to perform. A Sayo's Steady mouthpiece, Rovner Ligature, and a Legere 2.5 synthetic reed. Okay, if you're a reed player, you probably have questions about two of those. Sayo's is a French company that designs custom mouthpieces and manufactures them in France with a 3D printing process. Since they're 3D printed, you can get them in a bunch of crazy colors, which makes them seem like a novelty or a toy, but they're not. In fact, this mouthpiece costs more than the clarinet I'm playing it on. As for the synthetic reed, when I was in school, plastic reeds were a joke, but Legere reeds are surprisingly high quality and sound great. The main reason I use them is practical. A traditional cane reed, sitting unplayed for several minutes, needs moisture before it will respond well, and can even warp in that short amount of time. 
When you have to switch instruments frequently in a pit orchestra, the instant responsiveness of a synthetic reed makes a huge difference. Yes, it sounds good, or at least it sounds fine, but whew, that pitch. The upper register intonation is pretty good, but the lower register gets really flat, especially the lower you go. And the super high altissimo notes tend to get really flat. The high F is almost 50 cents flat. Yikes. For comparison, I got out my Yamaha B-flat clarinet. It's an intermediate model, and sells for about 10 times the price of this new C clarinet. Much to my surprise, ah, uh, double yikes. It's just as flat in the lower register. Of course, this is playing it cold, straight out of the case. As the instrument warms up, the wood swells and the pitch tends to rise. That happens with plastic clarinets too, but not by nearly as much. So while my Yamaha B-flat clarinet will warm up to the correct pitch, the C clarinet might always be this flat. Still, I think this is definitely a usable instrument. Final thoughts. Let's be clear, I came into this with very low expectations. In 2023, most student-grade brand-name woodwind instruments start at $1,000. How good can a sub-$200 instrument made by, uh, Yinfenti really be? Well, a lot better than you'd expect, going solely by price. Would I be willing to pay more for this instrument? Honestly, probably not. Do I regret paying what I did for it, though? Not at all. With its pitch issues... This instrument would not cut it in an ensemble with a bunch of other clarinets. But guess what? I'm nearly 50, and I've never seen one person playing a C clarinet before, much less a full ensemble of them. I feel that in the context of a one-on-apart pit orchestra, where reed players are constantly changing instruments, often switching to second or third instruments they're not as solid on, and often playing on old, borrowed, beat-up instruments, some shaky intonation on this is not going to be very noticeable. Well, we'll see about that in a week, when we have our next rehearsal. But one thing I can say for sure, this whole experience has been much more interesting and a lot more fun than spending an entire weekend transposing flute parts for B-flat clarinet. And one last thing to think about. If I ever need an E-flat clarinet, which I probably will, Yinfente makes those too. (laughs) 